Hi there, everybody. Hello. My name, my name is Sarah, and I'm a teacher at Mayes Florence. We have two schools in Florence, one on the west side of the school, uh, one side of the west side of the city, and one on the east side of the city. And uh, I teach in the west. And with me today is Joelle. Can you introduce yourself, Joelle? Hi, I'm Joelle. I also work uh, in the school on the west side of the city of Florence. Uh, and I'm from London, England. Yay, okay. go England. Where are you I'm, from, Sarah? I'm from Nottingham. I'm from the centre of England. Uh, Nottingham is very famous for Robin Hood and Sherwood Forest and the football team, Nottingham Forest as well. And ah, we see we have Alice on the line. Hey, Alice. And you're from Turin. Nice city. I used to live in Turin. I lived in Turin for five years. Beautiful city. Very nice. Have you ever been to, to Turin, Joelle? Yes, I have, actually. I went there a couple of years ago for a convention. Ah, very nice. It's good chocolate. Nice. They have good chocolate in Turin. Nice very chocolate, nice. nice ice cream. Yeah, very nice. Cool. Okay. Good, well, good skiing yeah. nearby. there's good skiing. There's good skiing. And there's the coast in Liguri as well. So, yeah, it's very nice. Oh, hey, Lucia. We've got Lucia from Naples. Hi, Hi Lucia. Lucia. Nice to meet you virtually, of course. We don't meet you physically, but we can say hi over the phone. That's not contagious. We're good with that one. Yeah. I've been to Naples, actually. Naples is beautiful. Very, yeah. very good pizza. Have you been to Naples? Yes, I have. I also went there for a convention, too. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. Um, yeah. Um, really interesting going down the Spacanapoli. really mm. yeah no it is it's a beautiful city yeah 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 okay yeah. the coffee is great. The coffee is really good yeah we have chiara as well from genova hi chiara hope you're well today have you been to genova for convention since you've been everywhere else for conventions no not for a convention but i did actually work in genova for a while Ah, okay, very nice. Genoa is famous for its um, pesto, if I remember rightly. I've been yeah. to Genoa. Yeah. Very good. And Christopher Columbus, Christopher Columbus from Genoa, I think. Really? Maybe. Yeah. 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 But, uh, geography is not so hot, but uh, all my history, but cool. Okay, well, today let's get started. So we've got Focus Activity 10 to 13. Joelle, can you read the title for me? Okay. Focus activity, 10 to 13, accidents and emergencies. Mm. So, uh, first question, uh, Joelle, what's an accident and what's an emergency? Okay, an accident is something that happens that you uh, were not expecting, okay? And it can be um, either dangerous or not. Okay, but in this case, we're talking about an accident that happens to yourself. So maybe cutting yourself in the finger could be an accident, or also like a car accident, okay? When you hit another person with, a, uh, with your car. And um, an accident can be uh, not very serious, or it could be very serious and critical, in which case it becomes an emergency. Okay, so you mm. need to get uh, medical help as soon as possible. Very good, thank you very much. Uh, for all of you who've joined in, if we ask you questions, if you wanna answer using the chat, that's great. The only thing that there is a bit of a time delay, so we get to see your comments about 20, 30 seconds after you make the comments. So feel free to comment away, ask questions, and then we can interact with you that way. Uh, unfortunately, we can't talk to you directly, but we can. Uh, answer your chat and you can ask us questions that way. Okay, so let's move on to the objectives for today. Joelle, could you read for me the slide? Okay, uh, accidents and emergencies. In this focus activity, talking about accidents and emergencies, present perfect plus ever, and describing an accident in the past. 
Okay. So when we use the present perfect with ever, Joelle, when do we use the present perfect uh, in this instance? Can you tell me a little bit about the present perfect? Yeah, so um, present perfect can be used in a lot of different situations, but with this uh, particular instance with ever, we are asking about an experience in your life. So uh, we use present perfect to talk about something that has happened in your life, but we aren't giving um, a specific time. So it's just talking about what happened, the experience, no specific time. Perfect, good. And when we describe accidents in the past, we can use a variety of tenses. And when we get up to level 10 to 13, you have to be trying to use all the different tenses that you can. So, Joelle, a bit of a test for you on grammar. What are the narrative tenses that we use when we try to talk about events that happened in the past? What, what can we use? Um, there are four main tenses that we use, although we could use more. Obviously, we've got the past tense, the past simple, okay? Uh, we can use the past perfect. We can also use the present perfect, just to talk about experiences that, that, that have happened in general in the past. We can use the past continuous as well, okay? And we can also use the past perfect continuous, if you want it. <laughs> <laughs> you see, it's even difficult for us as teachers to remember all the narrative teacher, all the, all the narrative tenses. Uh, good. Okay, so today is all about describing accidents and emergencies, and there's quite a lot of vocabulary in it. But before we start, let's just talk through some of uh, the questions that we've got. Joelle, can you read the slide for me? Yes, sure. Uh, just should I ask the number one? Number one. Yeah, sure. Okay. Accidents and emergencies. Number one, what is an emergency? What kind of emergencies are there? Hmm, okay, so you mentioned at the beginning the difference between an accident and emergency. So, what different types of emergencies do we have? What, what would you class as an emergency? Um, I would say a very bad car accident, like we can see in the picture, mm -hmm. that would definitely be an emergency. Um, any other ideas, students? Feel free to write your answers in the chat. Okay. Emergency, about at the moment, you've got the coronavirus. That's developed into emergency. That's Absolutely. a really big emergency, which is causing a lot of hospitalization in some areas. So emergencies for me generally indicate that you need help from someone else, which is generally uh, the emergency uh, teams, either at a hospital or at the doctors, um, or generally if you're medical staff, because an emergency is something, well, you've got different emergencies. If you think about- yeah, I was going to say, you've got the, what's the, the numbers we have in the UK? If you phone um, the emergency number in the UK, you have to phone 999. And right. then you have, the, yeah, the, you have the three choices. What are the three choices? So in Italy, uh, I believe that 113, 113 is for police or the Carabinieri, because people who have 112. Um, 112 or 113, but I can never remember which one is the police and which one is the carabinieri. Uh, then you've got 115. And That's 100, fire. And 118, which is for the ambulance. Oh, okay, yeah. In the UK, you just dial 999 and then you can ask for service. So you and only what, need to remember one number. What do we dial in the US? I have no idea. Nine one one. Nine one one, isn't it? Yeah. We watch too much CSI for that. <laughs> okay. Question number so, two. So yeah, just um just to finish up the types of emergencies. Like you just said, a pandemic is definitely an emergency. Mm. Car accident could be an emergency. A fire could be an emergency. Um an earthquake could be an emergency. Um yeah. So we have lots of different types of emergencies. Mm. Yeah, they're all good. Well, 
good ones, bad ones, because they're all usually emergency is a bad thing. I don't think there's an emergency which is ever a good thing. It's always a oh, negative thing. Yeah. So, sorry about interrupting you. Number two. <laughs> uh, Kiana's confirmed it's 118 for the ambulance. Thanks, Kiana. Yeah. Uh, and as Bruno says, we are experiencing a type of emergency as we speak. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, which is why we're all here teaching you webinars and not face to face in the different classes around uh, around the country. So yeah, very good. So question number two, Joelle, can you read? Uh, what kind of accidents can you witness? When does an accident become an emergency? Hmm. Hmm. Now, accidents you can witness. The first thing that I know that I've seen is you can witness uh, a traffic accident. That's probably the most common, especially here in Florence. Um, you see maybe a car that goes into another car or you see, unfortunately, maybe a scooter that uh, the person is uh, knocked off the scooter. So there's yeah. a lot of different traffic accidents that you can see. Can you think of any other accidents that you can see, John? Have you seen any accidents? Yeah, um, you can even think just of? people falling on the street or something. They trip mm. up on the pavement or um, old people who maybe um, lose their balance and they fall, they get yeah. their head. This is an accident. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I have seen people maybe cut themselves when they're cutting bread or using knives and they can seriously cut themselves. Yeah, kitchen so, accidents, lots of different yeah. kitchen accidents. Yeah. yeah. Lots of accidents at home, you know, getting burnt on the iron. Mm, yeah. When you're and my husband, actually, my husband works in a factory and mm -hmm. you can have a work accident. Maybe somebody does something when they're at work. So you've got an accident that happens at home. You've got an accident that also happens at work, um, which obviously is a, is a bad thing. And uh, question number three, Joelle. Um, so are there particular accidents that are common in your country? Why do you think there are so many of these types of accidents? Mm. So, Joelle, what do you think about this? The accidents in, first of all, let's think about the accidents in the UK. What's the so, accidents that are common in the UK? I think that it's not just in the UK, but mm, all around the world. I think car accidents, traffic accidents are very common. Um, more so maybe in Italy, <laughs> mm. but uh, also in the UK. Um, I don't really think of. I think um, just household accidents are mm. quite common, are quite common yeah. in the UK. Uh, yeah. mm, I think the reason could be because people are distracted. Maybe they have their kids at home with them, um, and they have to multitask, do lots of things at the same time, and obviously something. Um, you get distracted and you, you don't see something and there you go, the accident happens. Mm, yeah, no, it's very true. I think, um, what about for the guys who have joined in, Chiara and, and Bruno and Lucia and Iche, do you have any experience of accidents? Do you think there are particular accidents that happen more, maybe in Naples or in Genoa or in Turin? Is it different depending on where you're from in Italy? Are there more accidents in the north and less accidents in the south or is it the same in all of Italy? Is there anything in particular? Yeah, okay, so Bruno says accidents in the home. Yeah, uh, I agree. I think that they are very, very common accidents in the home or car, like traffic accidents. Yeah. I think that a lot of accidents are quite common with children because children um, do crazy things and they don't necessarily know. So I think there's quite a few um, accidents that you have because you have children. And so the things like, you know, kids play around with things in the home and maybe they pick up a knife and they don't know. And so you have an accident that happens because a child is playing with something that they shouldn't and mums and dads can't watch the kids 24 seven. So it's just one of those things. I think with, uh, if you have kids, it's, uh, it's, it's quite difficult to, uh, to control everything they do. Yeah, I can confirm that. I have two kids of my own and I have been to the hospital plenty of times for um, bumps, scrapes, bruises, 
uh, minor falls. Um, my child even broke her arm, broke her wrist once, falling off a, a like a game in the, in the playground. So, <laughs> yeah, always the way I think with kids. Yeah, Bruno mentioned about the accidents in work as well. So you've got accidents at work. I think especially um, in the past, maybe not so much today because there are more safety measures, but I think in the past, certainly there were a lot of accidents at work. People may be tired or doing things that they shouldn't do to maybe do things quickly and then they have problems. Um, so I think, yeah, I think both uh, accidents in the home and accidents at, at work are both commonplace, unfortunately, in both the UK and in, in Italy. Um, I have a dog, I don't have children, and I, um, I end up, he always has quite a few accidents, and I find myself in the vet. Um, luckily, no emergencies, but certainly accidents which require veterinary attention because he runs off and goes mental in the, in the garden. But, uh, <laughs> That's happened to me too with my dog. Yeah, absolutely. So when a car accident happens, what happens the Um in, in English, we just say you've got hit by a car. <laughs> Unless they drive yeah, and they don't help you, then, then that's a hit and run. Yeah, but the hit and run is if you get hit and the car doesn't stop. But if it just hits you and it stops and the person helps you, it's just you just got hit by a car. There's no there's no word for it. I know in Italian you have the word non or something like that. Oh, no, that's with another car. Yeah, but it's just you get hit by a car. So yeah, when does the accident car. become an emergency? Well, I think for me, an accident becomes an emergency when you need usually assistance from somebody else. That mm -hmm. is that is the definition. An accident is something that happens. An emergency is because you need something to happen and you need other people which is why we have the numbers. So in question four, what can you do if you witness an emergency? So if you witness an emergency, you have to act, you have to do. And so yeah. for me, it's a case of it, it requires something, um, something that requires uh, external help, if you like. Yeah. Mm. Kiana makes a good point. Mm -hmm. Car accidents happen because people refuse to put down their phones. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I've noticed in Italy that people absolutely refuse to use Bluetooth technology or hands-free sets. And even though there is, you know, very severe, very um, tough law on not using phones while you drive, I see people do it every day in Italy. I don't know about England because I haven't lived there for two years now, but um, it's true. Lots of accidents happen because people just continue to use the phones in the car. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why it is because modern cars today all have Bluetooth, but exactly. for some reason exactly. they, I don't know, I think the, the um, in the UK, because I was in the UK just recently, um, people don't use their mobile phones. People have Bluetooth or they don't use their mobile phones. There's not the, um, there's not the culture, if you like, to use the mobile phone when, when driving. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's different here in Italy. It's, uh, yeah, it's something, unfortunately, which is the cause, I think, of a lot of accidents. Um, but it is it is what it is, and hopefully things will change and people will understand, but yeah, certainly. But Joelle, going back to question four, what can you do if you witness an emergency? So absolutely, like you mentioned before, call the emergency services. So um, depending if it's uh, exactly very good, if it's um, an accident where you need medical assistance, you call the ambulance. If it's a fire, you call the fire brigade or the firefighters, as Americans would say. And in the case of, um, I don't know, maybe uh, a bank robbery, that's also an emergency, <laughs> uh, you would call the police, I suppose. Yeah. I think also what's important is um, there are a lot of people who do um, first aid courses. And if you're on a, if you're on, if you're on the scene or at the scene, let's say of an accident, and then you see that the situation becomes much more critical, then there are people that if they have got a qualification with first aid, maybe they go and they help the victim uh, or the casualty while they are, while they're working on it and, yeah. and while they're waiting for the emergency services to arrive. Another thing you can do is try not to panic. If 
you <laughs> witness in the moment. That yeah. is what you yeah. should do. Try not to panic and uh, keep a clear head and mm -hmm. take all the necessary steps, which is uh, uh, usually just to call the emergency services and maybe try to help the person who the accident has happened to stay calm. Yeah, yeah, that's important because a lot of the time they panic themselves. So generally, yeah. it's to be calm and to relax. Yeah. So yeah, Bruno asked. Yeah, Bruno asked the question: Can I fight? Can I say firefighters instead of the fire brigade? Brigade. Um, fire brigade is um, the English people. That's who we call. We call the fire brigade. But the firefighters is something that you would use in the US, so that's absolutely fine. Uh, we can talk about firefighters in the UK as well. The fire brigade is more the organization, if you like. We talk about the fire brigade, but the individual person would be the firefighter or the uh, fireman. Um, in the UK, in the UK, we can use both, but the fire brigade is the name given to the organization, let's say. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on and have a look at the next part. We've got some vocabulary coming up here. Um, Joelle, can you read for me at the top? Okay. Describing what happened. Fill in the blanks with the right phrasal verb. Okay, so we've got loads of phrasal verbs down the side. Can you read the phrasal verbs for me? Just read all of them first and then we'll go back and look at them individually. Okay, perfect. Uh, crash into, burn down, slip on, fall down, go up, run over, and put out. Okay, so lots of phrasal verbs here. Um, Joel, the first one, crash into, what type of an accident would happen in order for you to use the phrasal verb crash into? Um, it would most probably be involving vehicles. It could be a train, it could be a car, it could be a boat. Um, it could, <laughs> usually it involves vehicles. It doesn't have to. It could also involve people. <laughs> it could be, maybe. But um, mm -hmm. usually it's with vehicles. Okay. What about burn down? Burn down would only be associated with fire. Mm. Okay. Slip on? That slip yeah. on. Slip on could be on a banana, <laughs> a banana skin, <laughs> <laughs> like you see in the cartoon. Uh -huh. Or um, usually it's with water, so it's like a wet surface. Mm. Or yeah. Ice. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say frozen water. Yeah, when something's very slippery, the adjective is to be slippery, and then you would slip on something. Yeah. yeah. And the consequence of slipping, what happens when you slip on something? Well, then I would say you, you would probably fall down. Exactly. Good. Yeah. And uh, go up. Go up is one of those phrasal verbs that can mean lots of different things. But in this case, what do you think if you talk about something going up in an accident, what are you talking about? So something, if something goes up, I would again associate it with fire. So something getting completely destroyed by fire. Now, run over. That's again something which has different meanings, but in the case of accidents and emergencies, what would you associate run over with? Um, run over would be when a person or an animal gets hit by a car, but badly. <laughs> like literally the car drives over you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. It's definitely associated with vehicles. Yeah, if something runs over you, it's literally the, the impact of you going over the top of something. Exactly. Uh, and yeah, that's definitely an emergency, I would say. Mm -hmm. You often have it with cats, unfortunately, because cats on the road and then the car hits the cat and the cats. And yeah, yeah we use the, uh, the verb to squash, which is a great verb for using when you've actually just destroyed something. You can squash tomatoes, but unfortunately, mm -hmm. if you run over something, then you squash whatever it is that you uh, that you run over. And put out. 
Um, put out uh, is again associated with fire. So when there is a fire, you need to extinguish the fire. You need to make it stop. So we yeah. use this cool. phrase. Okay, so um, before we look at the sentences, let's just quickly check on the past participles because some of these verbs are regular and some of these verbs are irregular. So let's have a look at the first one. Joelle, first one, regular or irregular? Uh, crash is a regular verb. So the past participle would be crashed. What about burn? Hmm, burn is irregular. Do you want to tell them the past participle? No, I don't. I want you to tell them. Okay. <laughs> Go for uh, it. The past participle is burnt with a T. Although, um, I'm not sure if Americans... Mm, the do. Americans would treat it as a regular one. Yeah, Americans... Because they say it burned down and they would use yeah. the regular. Yeah. So it would be this is the UK. Yeah, the but, Americans use burn down and they would use it with the ED rather than a, a T. Let's go up here, yeah. There we go. Uh slip slip on. Regular slip. or irregular? Slip is regular. But, with the addition of a but we have different types of regular verbs um and the spelling can depend you've got the regular ed you've got the ied in case of a, um, a verb ending with y or we have um the regular verbs where you have to double the last consonant so this is this case consonant vowel consonant slipped Okay, and uh, we have fall, which is definitely not regular. Fall, fell, fallen, and go is definitely not regular, Joelle. Not, absolutely not. Um, so we have the past simple would be went up, and the past participle we would use gone up. Yeah, mm. it's gone up in flames, yeah. We, we definitely wouldn't say been. been. No. <laughs> use been. No, it's yes. been, it wouldn't use it. So in this case, it's go is always gone in this case. Yeah. Then we have run over. What's, what's run, regular or irregular? That's irregular, run, run, run. Yes, absolutely. Which is easy. And the last one's even easier because that's irregular and doesn't change. That's put, put, put. Excellent. Okay, so hopefully you've had a bit of time to have a look at the phrases. Let's go through them together. I know Bruno has been working through some of them already, but let's have a look and make sure you conjugate the verb in your answers and just check that um, you got it all right. And uh, let's have a look at the first one. Can you read the first one for me, Joelle? Yeah. Uh, while driving, I saw a dog walk onto the street. I didn't want to mm it. So I swerved to the left and mm, a tree. So um, somebody answered while driving. I said, yeah, Bruno. Yeah, walk onto the street. I didn't want to run over it. So I swerved to the left and. Bruno now, Bruno, Bruno wrote crash into, but if it's in the past. He, he wrote later. I did he? Yes, <laughs> mended it. Well done, Marina. A tree. <laughs> Perfect. Excellent. Okay, can you be number two for me? Right. The fire was already too big to mm, so we so all we could do was watch the house mm, in flames. So mm. the fire was already too big to I would say to extinguish. So, what is the phrasal verb for extinguish? The fire was already too big to put out. 
So all we could do was watch the house go up in flames. Okay, good, Lucina. Um, not burned down, but uh, you wrote went up. It's the right phrasal verb, but you've used the wrong tense because all we could do was already in the past. Let's watch the house and then we use the infinitive form go up in flames. Okay, so moving on, let's have a look at number three. They didn't shovel the snow off their driveway. To shovel snow is when you use a spade and you move the snow away from the driveway. So they didn't, as Joelle is demonstrating, that's lovely, Joelle, well done. <laughs> they didn't shovel the snow off the driveway. So when their neighbors walked on it, they mm and hurt themselves. So which one would you choose for this one, Joelle? So. Uh, they didn't shovel the snow off their driveway. So when their neighbors walked on it, they fell down and hurt themselves. Ah, now Lucia had slipped on, but in this case, it's fell down. Why can't you use slipped on, Joelle, in this instance? What's the important well, thing about slip on? You need to have a noun after it. You need to have what you slipped on. And there isn't a noun here. So unless they say slipped on the ice or slipped on the snow, you can't use slip on. So this is directly what happened to them. They fell down on the floor and hurt themselves. Good, okay. So number four, in, in contrast, that one, I'm glad they put up a sign to warn people that the floor is wet you don't want people to mm, it. So, okay, it. so in this case, we have we have the actual thing. So what it the floor, and in this case, we have to slip on it. And the last one, Joelle, can you read number five? Uh, luckily, no one was hurt in the factory fire, even though the whole factory. And here we would have to use past tense because it happened, burnt down or burned down if it's American English. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Good. Okay. So what's the difference between burn down and go up in flames? Mm, that's a good question. Preposition helps in this instance. Yeah. So burn down would be you have something standing like a house or a building. If it burns down, the house no longer exists because generally it falls to left. the floor. Yeah. If something goes up in flames, flames usually start small and then the flames get much bigger. And so they, what they do is the flames grow up. and then go up. So you talk about something going up in flames and the consequence of something going up in flames is that it burns down to the ground. Yeah, basically going up in flames is the, is the action that happens while the fire is starting and progressing. Whereas burning down is the effect, the consequence of what happens after everything is burnt. Yeah, no, very true, very true. Okay, so we've got some pictures to come and we've got some different questions and this is for you guys to comment in and see if you can answer any of these things related to the pictures that you show. So keep on your comments. It's great to hear from you. Uh, Joelle, can you read on the right for me the text? Okay. What happened? Answer the following question. One, describe what you see in the picture. What type of accident or emergency is it? Have you ever witnessed uh, what would you do if you witnessed this accident or emergency? Mm -hmm. so. oh. Okay, we have uh, we have Bruno's with his first idea. The car is crashed into a wall. The car. We have to use the present perfect here. So the car 
has crashed into a wall. Yes. Exactly, yeah. This is, or it could have been it crashed into another person yeah. or another car. Mm -hmm. but could have done, yeah. But yeah, the, the damage that, that that looks like is hopefully a, a wall and not a not a car because otherwise the other car would look the same. Yeah. But, uh, yeah so what car. type of what type of accident is this? So this is uh, a car accident or a traffic accident. Is it? A, do you think it's an accident or an emergency? Um depending on what they crashed into so if it were a wall um probably just an accident if maybe he crashed into another car which we can't see because it would be the car would be in front of this photograph maybe the people in the car in front could have got whiplash or mm. something else and it could be an emergency what is whiplash when the car is huge and you do like this with your neck and you get whiplash on your neck very painful actually i had i had a car accident in the uk and uh i got whiplash and the first day it's fine the third day it's like oh, agony and you can't move your neck it's so painful mm -hmm. yeah so have you ever witnessed an accident See like this. Has anybody listening ever witnessed uh, a bad car accident? Joel, have you seen something? Oh yeah, I had actually. Um, I witnessed a car accident right in front of me on the motorway. Um, oh God! Back, yeah, and um, somebody had fallen asleep at the wheel. This was like four o'clock in the morning, and swerved in the middle of the motorway just as another car was passing him and he hit the other car. Uh -huh. the so they both turned like a um, fish tailed into the motorway. Luckily, nobody was hurt. Luckily, nobody was killed, but the cars were absolutely trashed. Yeah, God, what a nightmare. Yeah. yeah. And I was mm. pregnant at the time, and I tell you, I was like panicking. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I'm going to have a baby here. <laughs> mm. So what did you do? Did you call anybody? Did you report it, or yeah, what did we, you do? We immediately called the ambulance, and... Um, when an accident happens on the motorway, it, this was here in Italy, um, also the police, um, polizia, stradale, so the police that work on the motorway are automatically involved. So they also came on the scene and they, they cordoned off the area of the accident and the ambulance, two ambulances arrived. Wow. So. Mm -hmm. And we also yeah. had straight my, my partner went to go and see if the people in the car needed any assistance immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Okay. Well, let's move on. Let's have a look at the next picture. Hmm. So, what can we see in this picture? We've used the uh, the verbs that we saw before, the phrasal verbs. There are basically, oh, there's three that you can use associated with fire. Um, let's see if anybody remembers what you're seeing. So put in the comments if you remember the phrasal verbs that we can use. There's three that are appropriate for this one. Have you ever been involved in a fire, Joelle? I think for me it's the worst kind of thing. I would hate it. Yeah, no, thankfully not. Only um, fire drills. Fire mm, drills. That's interesting. Yeah, fire drill. Yeah. Um, we have fire drills when we're at school. Yeah, exactly. The fire drill is um, like a simulation of what you have to do in the case of a fire when you're at school or when you're at work. So, no, luckily I've never actually been in one and I hope I never will be. Yeah, but I, I think they're terrible. The, the fire yeah. spreads so quickly and it's uh, devastating. Mm -hmm. So, but I've seen so fires. what? I've seen fires. You've seen, I've seen like, yeah. Forest fires. I've seen forest mm. fires. Yeah. Okay. So Lucia, well done Lucia. She's got put out, go up and burn down. So Joelle, can you explain what's happening in this photo using the verbs that Lucia suggested? So um, this looks like a, a house or maybe like a, like a shed or something. Um, and it has gone up in flames. It's gone up in flames and I can see two firefighters or two firemen 
uh, in the process of trying to put out the flames. Ooh, Bruno. <laughs> Bruno, Bruno that is, that you've got a lot more imagination. <laughs> the UFO has launched a photon beam. Now, it wouldn't be on Earth, but it would be towards Earth. Uh, yeah. I would say towards Earth, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so yes, exactly that. But, okay, let's move on. We've got another photo coming up. So let's have a look at this one. Hmm. So put in your comments, what verbs can you use to uh, this photo, which we saw, the phrasal verbs that we saw? And Joelle, have you ever been involved in an accident involving a bicycle? Um, have your kids, do your kids cycle? Yes, they do, yes, they do. Do you remember teaching them to ride a bike? Was it a, a yes. painful experience? Um, my youngest still has little stabilizers on the, on the mm. But she often falls over anyway when she takes curves too fast. Um, and my eldest obviously has fallen over plenty of times, but just nothing serious, just a few scrapes and bruises on their knees. <laughs> oh, good. Lucia is quick off the mark, slip on and fall down. So can you use those verbs, Joelle, to describe the picture for me? So this guy has, he probably didn't slip on anything. I don't think so. It doesn't look icy or wet where he is. But um, he probably was trying to be flash on his bike and doing, you know, <laughs> maybe doing some stunts on his bike and jumping with his bike. And he probably just fell down. He fell down. Yeah. Oh, so he may have slipped on a banana skin if there was a banana skin on the you floor. Never know. Yeah. You never know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And let's just have a look at the final slide we're going to look at today. And it's a series of questions. Now, we talked at the beginning about the present perfect. So the question here, Joelle, can you ask the question in red at the top? Okay. So have you ever ask your partner okay. if they have ever experienced the following? If they have, ask them what happened. Okay. So, so a bit of revision. For you. So if you're using the present perfect uh, for the first question to get the experience. So the first question is, have you ever, and then you have to ask the question. If the person says, no, I haven't, end of the conversation. Or you yes. say, have you? And yeah, you have you? And, and then you say, me neither. <laughs> but it, it, most of the time you ask the question, and when they say yes, naturally, you're interested. And as soon as you start asking specific questions, you then need to change the tenses that you're using. So the first question, have you ever for the present perfect? But after that, you need to get specific. And as soon as you're specific, what do you do, Joelle? What tense do you use? Well, then we, we have to automatically change to past simple because we're asking about a specific event that happened at a specific time in the past. Exactly. So it's quite simple in the fact that we've got some things down here. What we'll do is, Joelle and I are going to have a little chat about one or two of them. In the meantime, if you take the time to actually write and see whatever's happened to you, maybe you can tell us a story about you and some accidents, hopefully nothing emergency or nothing serious, but something that maybe has happened to you. Um, thanks, Bruno, again for clarifying the young man in the last photo probably slipped on the COVID-19. Um, hopefully did it some damage. Um, but yeah, so if you can take some time, take time to maybe write your answers and then we can have a look at them and we can share them. Um, so concentrate on your um, tenses and tell us a little bit about things that have happened to you. So Joelle, uh, have you ever slipped on ice? Um... No, I haven't. Well, I have slipped on ice. Uh, I have slipped on ice, but I didn't fall down. So, ah, okay. I have on ice, but I, I've never fallen down because of slipping ah. on ice. Well, Bruno's with you. He slipped on ice several times, more than once. So it's several times. Yeah, I think everybody slipped on ice in. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, slips on with a double P. Yeah, very good. Double P. Okay. 
Um, I've slipped on ice a lot of times here in um, Italy. Okay, perfect. Okay, Sarah, have you ever broken a bone? Touch wood, I have never broken a bone. And you? Have you? No, me neither. I've never broken a bone Good. either. Your and children? I I oh, me too. Have your children? Yes. my uh, At that time, my six-year-old daughter fell off a game at the uh, playground and she oh, broke her mm, Nightmare. Uh, nightmare. It yeah. was. <laughs> Have you ever had um, heat exhaustion? Uh, yes, I have. Uh, I got heat exhaustion when I was pregnant with my second child. It was, uh, the, like, at that time, 2017, 2015, it was the hottest summer ever uh, at that time. And um, I literally, my blood pressure was zero. And the heat was just, I just, I couldn't, I didn't have the strength to get up or to move around, but I was constantly busy. Yeah. Yeah. And like you, I struggled. Yeah, 2017, I struggled with the heat. It was my first year in Italy, having lived in England for 10 years. And then I came to Italy and the summer, it was just so hot. And mm -hmm. I was trying to do a lot of different activities and my body just went <clears throat> No, and I yeah. just collapsed and literally, I remember my husband making me drink a lot of water and oh yeah, it was terrible. You, you don't realize mm -hmm. until it's too late sometimes. Yeah. But, what about losing consciousness? That's quite a serious one. Have you ever lost consciousness? I have actually once um, when I was having a blood test done. And again, my blood pressure was very, very low. I was a bit worried about having this blood test done. I don't know why. And I think the mix, of, you know, the mix of uh, being worried, the combination mm -hmm. of being worried and uh, having the blood test just made me lose yeah. consciousness. What's and the you? What's the verb? What's the verb when you lose consciousness? What do you do? There's a verb that we use in so English. There's a phrasal verb. Yeah. We... Uh, not a phrasal verb. Yeah. I was thinking of. Uh, Oh, oh, you use pass out. Ah. You use pass out. Yeah. The other one I was thinking of was faint. Faint. Yeah. You faint. Yeah. So you can faint to pass out to lose consciousness. All the same. Yeah. yeah. I, I fainted when I was a kid. I had, um, I had, I had, went to the dentist and I had a tooth out and I fainted. <laughs> but nothing serious. Nothing serious. Yeah. And have you had to evacuate your home? That's very extreme. No, I've never had to evacuate my home, but I have had to be confined to my home, which is, I think, what everybody is doing right now yeah. with the coronavirus and the COVID-19. We're all confined. Oh, God. Yeah. And you? Which is just, uh, I've, I've never had to evacuate my home at all, thank goodness. Lucia, I've lost consciousness in the underground because of a crowd, yeah. God, that must have been happening. Yeah. But at least if you are standing and you're very close together, if you lose consciousness, you can't fall down because people stop you from falling down. They say that in Japan, that happens. That on yep. the underground in Japan, there are so many people that if you, if you pass out or lose consciousness, you can't fall down because there's no room. So yep. you just like that and then yeah it's crazy uh, so shall we go back and have a look at what we've looked at today yeah we'll just wrap up here so let's go back to the first slide we've seen lots of vocabulary today the phrasal verbs we looked at all for talking about accidents and emergencies so can you remember the phrasal verbs that we saw there were the ones related with fire there were three related with fire do you remember them? You can pop them into the comments. So there was three that. related with fire. There was three, uh, two related with accidents involving if you have, uh, if you're standing on your feet and then you're not standing on your feet. There are two verbs for that one. Joelle, what do you, what do you remember? I remember slipped on or slip on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I if remember. you slip on something, what happens after you slip on something? 
you fall down. Okay. Uh, what about the fire? What about what three ones associated with the fire? We've got um, go up, burn down, and put out when you extinguish it. Yeah, good. And any other ones? What else did we study? Did I we have a look at um, yeah, we had crash into run over. And yeah, exactly. What's the difference between crash into and run over? Crash into is when you hit something and maybe you knock it away or you just knock into it. Whereas run over is when you actually pass over it with the vehicle. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And then we yeah. also have pass out when you lose consciousness. Okay. Yeah, yeah right. great. And uh, that's it for today. So thank you very much for joining us. We hope you've enjoyed it. And hopefully you won't have very many accidents and emergencies in the future. But if you do, you now have all those phrasal verbs to describe them. So have a good day and see you again soon. Thanks very much. Bye, guys. Bye.